Aphasia Access envisions a world where healthcare providers, businesses, and community leaders all know the tools that help people with aphasia navigate life. Whether that life exists in acute or rehabilitation care, ongoing services, or community life in general. In the rehabilitation phase of treatment, the emphasis is on setting and achieving communication goals. These goals include helping the person with aphasia to improve their communication skills and to adjust to the changes they have experienced. You will also be helping the person's family and friends to learn effective communication strategies. And you will be assisting the person with aphasia to communicate in team conferences and other situations with your healthcare colleagues. Goal setting, discussing and establishing goals. You will help the person with aphasia to set meaningful and realistic goals by helping them to understand their individual communication difficulties and by developing specific plans for improvement. The first step is to involve the person with aphasia in setting the goals. Number one, be sure it's a collaborative process. Goal setting is a collaborative process. As collaboration relies on conversation, you can demonstrate good communication methods while you are working to establish your goals. So this, uh, is, this is me and you mm -hmm. doing the speech therapy, right? Yes. But in there, we can do many, many, many things. We have to choose. Um, we have to choose, you and I, especially with what you want, what we're going to choose to work on. Number two, include multimodality communication goals. You will want to choose goals from a range of communication domains, including conversation, using ways other than speaking in order to convey a message, as well as improving speaking, understanding, reading, and writing. Number three, make it a conversation. One of the common challenges for people with aphasia is to ask questions or initiate topics. So. Hope? Yeah. Yeah? No. The, oh, your wife? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what about her? Uh, right here, I... Uh, 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 no. Right here, what are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do? Okay, so we're talking about your wife? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Are you concerned about her? Great. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Number four, encourage the use of gesture, writing, and pointing. It is important to include goals that teach the person with aphasia to use gesture, writing, and pointing to photographs, illustrations, or objects to convey their ideas. A multimodal communication approach encourages the use of many ways to get the message across. So we're also going to look to see if the words are difficult for you, what else you can do. What else you can do. Like gesture. You no, show no. a lot. I see I, you do that. I know. Okay, well, I'm yeah. Pictures. Mm -hmm. We are using pictures here. I know that. We are using pictures. Number five. Include psychosocial goals. In the course of many conversations that occur in communication therapy sessions, Topics around the issues of disability, adjustment, and sadness inevitably come up. You can help by discussing these issues openly and helping the person with aphasia to express their feelings. Are you battling? Mm -hmm. Are you battling? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, this is a family thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you're battling and she's battling and I would expect it to be no different. Right. Yeah. This is tough. Yep. It's a tough time. Conversation partner training. The people who interact with the person who has aphasia represent the only door to the world of communication. Your role in teaching effective communication skills is an essential one. Establishing the social network. The first step is to identify the people in the person with the aphasia's social circle. Who do they normally talk to? Make a list of the key people who will need to learn new communication skills. Who else do you communicate with a lot? Who else do you speak to or communicate with a lot? Do you have a daughter? Yes, two daughters. You've got two daughters. Two okay, daughters. so they're two of 
those two daughters. Mm -hmm. Who else do you try to speak to often? Approaches for the acute and rehabilitation settings. You may not have time to engage in lengthy conversation partner training in the acute hospital setting, but you can introduce the idea and model some basic communication techniques for family and friends when you encounter them. In the rehabilitation environment, try to meet the key people and share some individualized communication strategies. So it's important, Tita, that we work with you because you are patient, but it's very important that we don't forget the people that are in your life. The problems are with you and the people you love. When the communication is hard, we want them to understand as well. Number one, case conferences. Your role in a case conference is to make sure that the person with aphasia understands what is being said and has an opportunity to express themselves. A, model good communication skills. It is important for you to be a communication resource to your colleagues in your work setting. Other healthcare professionals need to learn effective communication skills so that they can make their services more accessible to people with aphasia. One of the best ways to start is by demonstrating effective communication skills in the case conference. The physio will be there, all the girls, yeah, the yeah. OT, me, the social worker, the doctor who you see regularly, yeah. the nurse, everyone's going to report. B, prepare topics and comments prior to the meeting. Prior to the meeting, discuss the important topics and make notes about the comments that will need to be made. You can bring lists of keywords and graphic illustrations with you to the meeting. When you're in a room like this, and they turn to you and they say, Garfield, what do you think? Yeah. It's not going to be easy, Garfield. Yeah. Um... Okay. We don't want to miss our opportunity. Okay. We're a team. Yeah. Okay, you and me, I'm going to be at your side. Yes. And I'm going to leave it to you. But if it doesn't come out, we're not missing our opportunity together, right? Okay. Okay. But you and I want to know ahead of time what the concerns are. Number two. Discharge planning. The transition from the hospital setting to the community can be a stressful time for people with aphasia. You can help by exploring opportunities to engage in community-based social activities and supporting the people in their social circle. Now that you are being discharged from hospital facilities, we are going to refer you to a place where people with aphasia, like you have, have a whole community okay. where there will be tons of people dealing okay. with aphasia and they're not in therapy but they're definitely not doing zip right yes because this is a place with great social opportunities okay okay you can make a big difference to the person with aphasia by creating a supportive circle of people who know how to communicate with them effectively. These trained people will provide a communication ramp in the home and in the community so that the person with aphasia will be able to engage in meaningful life activities after they have left the hospital.